James Barber June 10, 1775, to June 7, 1842, was an American lawyer, politician and planter. He served as a delegate from Orange County, Virginia in the Virginia General Assembly, and as Speaker of the Virginia House of Delegates. He was the 18th Governor of Virginia and the first Governor to reside in the current Virginia Governor's Mansion. After the War of 1812, Barber became a U.S. Senator from 1814 to 1825 and the United States Secretary of War 1825 to 1828. Early and family life James Barber was born in what became Barboursville in Orange County on June 10, 1775. Barber was the son of Thomas Barber who held a seat in the Virginia House of Burgesses in 1769 and his wife the former Mary Pendleton Thomas. His grandfather also James Barber, 1707-1775 had patented lands in Spotsylvania County in 1731 and 1733, and his uncle of the same name James Barber Burgess also served in the Virginia House of Burgesses 1761-65, representing Spotsylvania County. Both sides of his family were among the first families of Virginia, as well as early settlers in Orange County and westward. By the time James was born, the Barber family owned over 2,000 acres 8 square kilometers and held several slaves. However, the family suffered financial reverses during the American Revolutionary War and its aftermath. Nonetheless, James finished his formal education with private tutors and an academy run by James Waddell at Gordonsville, Virginia. His brother Philip Pendleton Barber, would later become Speaker of the United States House of Representatives and Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. On October 29, 1792, Barber married Lucy Johnson, the daughter of Benjamin Johnson who had represented Orange County in the General Assembly in 1790. They had three daughters, one of whom, Frances, died as an infant in 1801, and four sons, including James Barber and Benjamin Johnson Barber (1821–1894), later rector of the University of Virginia. Topic: <laughs> Career. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Early years. Barber served as Deputy Sheriff of Orange County, beginning in 1792. In 1794, he was admitted to the Virginia Bar. With wedding gifts from his father, as well as by building his own legal practice and running his plantation, Barber was able to build up personal wealth. His friend and somewhat neighbor at Monticello Plantation, former President Thomas Jefferson, helped design the mansion in which Barber lived most of his adult life, called Barboursville. By 1798, Barber owned several slaves and would expand that plantation over the years, as would his somewhat neighbor on the other side, President James Madison at Montpelier Plantation. House of Delegates Orange County voters elected Barber to the Virginia House of Delegates in 1796, and he became that body's youngest member. Re-elected several times to that part-time position, he served until 1804, and again from 1807 to 1812. Barber became known for eloquence, and served on various committees, rising to chairman of several, including the Committee of Privileges and Elections and the Finance Committee. Peers elected him as Speaker of the House of Delegates for many terms. Barber held strong Republican beliefs, similar to his neighbors Jefferson and Madison. He vigorously opposed the Alien and Sedition Acts of 1798 and used his rhetorical eloquence to support the Virginia Resolutions. Barber believed the acts and their supporters threatened the United States, stating, "...to make an expected attack from abroad a pretext for attacking the principles of liberty at home has drawn aside the curtain and clearly illuminated for all who are willing to see." Barber refused to support legislation increasing executive powers, especially unchecked powers. In the House of Delegates, Barber took pride in writing the bill establishing the Literary Fund of Virginia, which passed on February 2, 1810. This provided some funding for public education in each county in the Commonwealth. Barber later requested that the only inscription on his tombstone be a reference to this act, affirming his strong belief that society would progress only through education. 
However, he also believed intellectual abilities were connected with gender, race and landownership. <laughs> Governor of Virginia In 1811, Barber declared his candidacy for the governorship, but lost to the incumbent, George William Smith. However, Smith died in office on December 26, 1811, during a fire at Richmond's Monument Theater. On January 3, the legislature convened and elected Barber governor. At the time, British raiders were impressing American sailors including Virginians, especially near Hampton Roads and Norfolk. Barber favored war with Britain, which he viewed as the only way to end British interference with U.S. sovereignty. Barber's father had trained the Orange Militia, so the new governor knew their inadequacies. Governor Barber sought funding of Virginia's militia on February 11, 1812, and also personally toured the Tidewater region most at risk. On June 18, 1812, Congress declared war, so the War of 1812 began, and Barber became the war governor. Perhaps because of his wartime preparations or willingness to risk his own funds, Barber faced no opposition and was re-elected governor in November 1812. However, by 1813, British ships had been raiding coastal Virginia. Some delegates opposed Barber's support of President James Madison and national unity, but nonetheless re-elected him. During 1814, Barber finally convinced the legislature to approve raising 10,000 troops, and placing that militia under federal control. Washington, D.C. was sacked before the Treaty of Ghent brought the war to an end. Barber also authorized exploration of the Upper James River, and received funding to improve Virginia roads. He was also the first governor to inhabit the Virginia Governor's Mansion, designed by Alexander Paris. Virginians sent resolutions thanking the governor for his strong and apt leadership during the war. U.S. <laughs> Senator. On December 1, 1814, Virginia's legislators elected Barber then 40 to succeed Richard Brent in the United States Senate. Although Barber had previously opposed a national bank, President James Madison supported such, so Barber became the Senate sponsor of a bill written by Secretary of the Treasury Alexander James Dallas, which authorized the national bank with $50 million in capital. It passed, although prior similar legislation failed. Senator Barber aligned with Senators John C. Calhoun and Henry Clay on internal improvements and slavery. Although his brother Philip Pendleton Barber served contemporaneously in the U.S. House, their stances and votes often differed. Senator Barber proposed a committee on roads and canals, supported the bonus bill, authorizing spending the bonus from the National Bank on internal improvements, and proposed a constitutional amendment to grant Congress authority to appropriate money for internal improvements. Senator Barber also opposed reducing the National Army, supported a bill abolishing imprisonment for debts, and introduced the Navigation Act of 1818. That act closed U.S. ports to any ships arriving from British ports closed to U.S. ships. Barber hoped this would encourage the British to open their ports. However, that effort failed. In 1823 a compromise led to the Elsewhere Act, which allowed for reciprocal trade. Peers elected Barber president pro tempore of the Senate in 1819. The 16th Congress, over which Barber presided, adopted the Missouri Compromise on Slavery. Barber actually proposed combining the bill admitting Missouri after he spoke in favor of allowing that state's voters to elect to support slavery with the bill admitting Maine. Both in an attempt to deny the Northern Senators an opportunity to gain four anti slavery Senators. His speech may have foreshadowed the Southern position in the American Civil War after his death. Sir, no portion of the Union has been more loyal than the South. Is this your reward for our loyalty? Sir, there is a point where resistance becomes a virtue and submission a crime. Our people are as brave as they are loyal. They can endure anything but insult. But the moment you pass that Rubicon, they will redeem their much-abused character and throw back upon you your insolence and your aggression. As Senator, Barber sponsored a resolution giving an honorary sword to Colonel Richard Mentor Johnson of Kentucky for his efforts in the Battle of the Thames in 1813. Johnson and Barber would become quick friends following Barber's efforts. Later, Johnson promoted Barber's appointment as Secretary of War under President John Quincy Adams. However, that association with Adams, whom the Senate narrowly elected over Andrew Jackson, would later devastate both Senator Clay's and Barber's political careers. 
Virginia legislators elected the Jacksonian Democrat John Randolph of Roanoke to succeed Senator Barber in December 1825. Like Barber, he would defend slavery, although a member of the American Colonization Society like Henry Clay, and unlike Barber, he would later manumit his own slaves upon his death. Randolph had opposed both the National Bank and the Missouri Compromise of 1820 that Barber had helped Clay pass. Secretary of War Following Adams' inauguration on March 4, 1825, fellow senators confirmed Barber as Secretary of War and Henry Clay as Secretary of State. The War Department's main functions were managing the Army and overseeing Indian affairs. Barber soon came into conflict with Governor George Troop of Georgia, who wanted to evict Creek Indians from 5 million acres square kilometers of land. Northern Creeks had supported Britain in the War of 1812 and Georgia planters had engaged in the Red Stick War in an attempt to acquire Southern Creek lands, although those Southern Creeks had assimilated and supported the Americans during the war. Governor Troop's partially Creek cousin William McIntosh had signed the Treaty of Indian Springs 1825, purporting to relinquish tribal lands in exchange for $200,000 for himself and installments totaling $200,000 for five other signatories, and the U.S. Senate approved it by one vote on March 7, but tribal members protested vehemently as well as sentenced McIntosh to death and killed him. President Adams renegotiated the Treaty of Washington 1826 on slightly more favorable terms to the native peoples. Both treaties provided for removal west of the Mississippi as President Jackson would later do the Cherokee Indians on the Trail of Tears. Governor Troop was upset that the second treaty allowed some creek to remain in Georgia, and began a survey to prepare to sell those remaining lands, as well threatened to call out the militia, at which point the federal government ceased protecting the Indians. All Creeks lands were seized and all Creeks removed from Georgia by 1827. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Diplomat. By 1826, President Adams was deeply unpopular compared to his opponent in 1824 and presumptive in 1828, Andrew Jackson, as was Secretary of State Clay. Although some advocated Barber as a vice presidential candidate in the upcoming 1828 elections, Barber sought an appointment as minister to England. Critics claimed Barber sought a harbor in the storm from the approaching election. Nonetheless, European intellectuals accepted the new ambassador. During the 1820s, Barber was a member of the Columbian Institute for the Promotion of Arts and Sciences, as were both Andrew Jackson and John Quincy Adams and other prominent military, medical and other professions. On July 1, 1828, Barber received an honorary LL.D. from the University of Oxford. <laughs> Final years After President Adams' electoral defeat in 1828, Barber returned to Virginia, where he announced his candidacy for the General Assembly. However, Barber's association with Adams and nationalistic policies made him unfavorable to the Virginian Republicans. Although his opponent was illiterate, the election was extremely close. And although Barber was declared the winner, the election was contested. Before the legal decision, Barber retired on February 16, 1831, citing the hostility in the Assembly against him. Barber continued to remain active in national politics. In December 1831 he attended the first national convention of the National Republican Party in Baltimore and was elected its presiding officer. The convention nominated Henry Clay for president in 1832 and John Sargent for vice president. Barber also became chairman of the 1839 Whig Party Convention in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania which nominated Virginia-born William Henry Harrison for president who won the election of 1840 to become the ninth president of the United States. <laughs> Death and legacy After retiring from the assembly, Barber appeared and gave speeches to support political friends. One observer declared, Gov. Barber presented an imposing appearance, with striking face, long, shaggy eyebrows, and head covered with silvery flowing locks, with a majestic and sonorous voice, he filled one's conception of a Roman senator in the last days of the Republic. 
However, Barber's health began to decline, and he spent his final months at Barboursville. He died on June 7, 1842. Senator James Barber was buried in the family cemetery on the estate. The grave and ruin of his mansion, Barboursville, remain within the modern Barboursville vineyards. The ruin is listed on the National Register of Historic Places, as well as included within the Madison Barber Rural Historic District. However, the tombstone is a modern replacement ordered in 1940. In addition to Barboursville, Virginia, Barboursville, West Virginia is named in his honor, as are Barber County, West Virginia and Barber County, Alabama. However, Barberville, Kentucky is probably named after his uncle James Barber Burgess, 1734-1804. The Library of Virginia has his executive papers. The Barber family remained politically powerful in that area of Virginia for the rest of the century, although their slaves were freed in the American Civil War. His first cousin John S. Barber (1790–1855) also served in the Virginia General Assembly and chaired the Democratic National Convention of 1852. J. S. Barber's sons James Barber and his elder brother John S. Barber Jr. served in the Virginia House of Delegates before the American Civil War, and that James Barber also served in the 1850 Virginia Constitutional Convention and the 1861 Secession Convention and in the Confederate States Army while his brother continued to run the Orange and Alexandria Railroad. After the war, John S. Barber Jr. reorganized the state's conservative party as the Democratic Party and served in both the U.S. House and U.S. Senate. 